In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at some of the basics of how Max MSP handles digital audio. Uh, in this simple example, uh, we're going to use uh, a sine wave generated by the Cycle MSP object. Um, and we're also going to use the Scope object uh, widget to visualize the waveform and the Meter widget to visualize the amplitude level of the signal. It's important to remember that digital audio is simply a stream of numbers. Every sample uh, is a different number, and the number of samples per second is determined by the sample rate. Uh, we can see from the uh, DSP status window that, uh, in this case, uh, we're working at a sample rate of 44,100 hertz, 44,100 samples per second. In Max MSP, uh, each digital audio sample has a value between negative 1 and 1, so that if we use the cycle uh, object to generate a sine wave, uh, what comes out of this outlet here is a stream of numbers with values between minus 1 and 1 uh, that could be represented on a graph like this. So in this graph here, each of these bars uh, is an individual digital audio sample. Over time, the values of the samples trace the shape of a sine wave, as you can see. Uh, and remember that these numbers are generated very quickly, uh, 44,100 per second, uh, in effect. Uh, so what we're looking at here would take just over one thousandth of a second for the cycle object to generate. Uh, the important thing to notice here is that the maximum sample value is 1, and the minimum value, here for example, is minus 1. If I now connect this up and uh, play the sine wave for a second, we can see uh, here that the waveform uh, has a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of minus 1 so that the waveform completely fills the screen of the scope widget. Because we know that the cycle object is outputting 44,100 numbers per second uh, with values between minus 1 and 1, we should also be able to understand uh, what happens if we multiply that signal by another number. If I use the uh, multiply tilde object, uh, for example, to multiply that signal by 0 0.5, like so, uh, it means that the value of every sample that gets generated by the cycle object uh, will be multiplied by 0 0.5. In other words, this uh, sample here which is at, uh, currently at its maximum value of 1, will be multiplied by 0 0.5. So its new value will be 0 0.5. This sample here, uh, exactly in the middle, uh, has a value of 0. Multiply that by 0 0.5, and we'll obviously still have 0. Um, and this sample here uh, has a value of minus 1. Multiply that by 0 0.5, and you get negative 0 0.5. So what we'll end up with uh, is a sine wave with the same frequency, but half the amplitude. So now we see that the maximum value shown on the scope widget is uh, 0 0.5, and the minimum value is negative 0 0.5. If I now add a floating point number box so that I can uh, change the value that I'm multiplying the signal by, uh, what we'll see is that for values between 0 and 1, uh, it allows me to, it operates like a volume control. So we hear nothing at the moment because we're multiplying by 0, and as I increase the value that I'm sending to the multiply object, we see the amplitude of the signal gradually increase. so that uh, multiplying by 1 gives us a full-scale signal. 
multiplying by zero obviously gives us nothing at all. And intermediate uh, multiplications allow us to progressively scale the amplitude of the signal. If I multiply the signal by a value that's more than one, let's say I multiply the signal by two, for example, um, that will give me at this point here uh, a sine wave with a maximum value of two and a minimum sample value of minus two. That's fine, except uh, that if I then send that signal to the DAC object, the digital to analog converter can only convert numbers up to a maximum value of one, minimum value of minus one. Any values outside that range uh, will be clipped by the DAC object so that uh, if I switch this on, uh, we'll hear a distortion in the sound. We can also see uh, that the red uh, clip light in the meter widget has lit up, and, and in the scope widget, uh, we can see that the sine wave goes off the graph at the top and the bottom, and so we get a flattening out of the wave shape, which is why we hear uh, distortion in the sound. If we want to avoid digital clipping like that, we need to make sure that no samples with values greater than 1 or less than minus 1 uh, get sent to the DAC object. And with one signal, uh, that's easy. Just make sure you don't multiply it by more than 1. This keeps the signal in the range of values that the DAC can cope with. If, however, I take two sine waves and add them together, because these sine waves both have values in the range of minus one to one, when I add them together, at some point I'm going to get a value of two or a value of minus two, uh, so that if I send the result uh, of this sum to the DAC, uh, I get clipping exactly as I did before. If I were to uh, divide the results of that sum by two, uh, then I would be able to return that uh, to the safe range of minus one to one. Uh, dividing by 2, as we know, is uh, exactly the same as multiplying by 0 0.5. So, for example, if I were to do this, I would uh, no longer get any clipping, as we'll see.